the beta room. So excited, so excited, so excited that I actually made a status update on my Facebook, which unfortunately, uh, my mom is also on Facebook, and so, so like she saw that, and of course she comments, right? And she's like, three minutes? They're giving you three minutes right after Columbus Day? What, they don't like Indians? Just so you know, my mom's been trying to prove without a fucking doubt that we're Native American ever since I can remember, right? But she never really does this towards anything positive. Like, it's only when someone's discriminating against us. Like, it would be really cool if I could talk to wolves or the wind or something, or maybe get federal aid. And so, like, one time I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to school. Like, this is your one job. If you could just go and research our heritage and get documents or whatever and prove that I'm Native American so I can get money for school. I don't hear from her for a fucking week. The next time I do hear from her, it's in an email. Big letters, important, open, please read. And I'm like, word, that's my money for like school and shit, right? I open the email and it's a big picture of a dead animal carcass and it says, Chupacabra, found in West Texas. <laughs> the one time I give her the chance to fucking prove that we're Native American, the bitch acts more Mexican than she ever has in my entire existence. My fucking mother, dude, she, we, it's been up and down. Bless her heart, though. She, she took off when I was 14, and she left my brother to raise us. And he's three years older than me. So I was 14, he was 17. And, uh, you know, we had this house, whatever, and of course, it was party all the time. And he has all of his friends move in. And so, as 14 years old, it was a really crucial time as a young girl. Like, I didn't learn a lot of things that a mother would teach her daughter. Like, I didn't learn how to put on makeup, and I didn't learn that, like, it wasn't unladylike to fucking say fuck every other word and spit loogies and burp and shit. But I did learn some stuff. I learned some things. Like, I learned that men like uh, fresh hot french fries and fresh hot blowjobs. <laughs> Oh, sex. Speaking of, I was on the internet, interwebs, internets, whatever you want to have it, earlier because, um, you know, I'm a fucking geek and I like to stay online instead of talking to actual people. And I read this article about um, this artist in Ohio. That's not the joke because I was really surprised that there was actually art in Ohio also. But this guy, this artist or whatever, he built this tunnel, like this 50 foot long something tunnel. And it's all made out of plywood and everything and it's called the Rape Tunnel. So hear him out. This is his idea. Um, you enter the tunnel, and then he will, quote, try his best to overpower you and rape you. That's, okay, so here's the thing about this, is that everybody has a plan A, like a square one, the drafting board or whatever. Here's his first plan. It wasn't called the rape tunnel first. It was called the punch you in the face tunnel. I don't even have to explain the concept to you on that one, okay? This is, this is totally fucking true. You can, it's Googleable. You can Google this shit. I promise you. But you go and you Google it, Google rape tunnel, it'll pull him up, little bastard. So the punch in the face tunnel. This model <laughs> decides, well, I want to see what that's about. Bitch walks in the tunnel, bam, meets him in the fucking face, right? Like, gets in, knocks her out, breaks her nose, and now she's, you know, ruins her career, and they're tied up in court. Because it was actually open, the punch in the face tunnel. She fell prey to it. They're in court, and so he says, again, quoting him, well, you know, I affected her career for the future, so naturally, you know, I shut that down, and naturally the second option was the rape tunnel. Naturally, your second option was the rape tunnel. Let me tell you something, Mr. Artist. You have another lawsuit coming, because this has been known as the rape tunnel since 1993, and that's copyright infringement. <laughs> I don't know. I'll take it any way I can get it. Like, I, I haven't had sex in a while. Like, I'll rape it, whatever. I don't care. But <laughs> I, I was, the last relationship I had was really traumatic, and it was just always drama. And here's the thing is that, um, you know, it, it was just always drama with me and him. And for instance, like this one time, I thought that, uh, you know, I thought that I was knocked up. I thought that I was, you know, but in the oven. And you really find out, you know, who your friends are when you come to that crossroads. Like, I had this friend, and she was like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to get an abortion? And to me, that's fucked up. Because if there's a possibility that I'm with child, and I expect you as my friend to push me down the stairs like it's 1940, and I don't want to waste a wire hanger, all right? You didn't 